18 January 2021, I posted a video on electric vehicle, the biggest revolution of 21st century. And then a follow-up video on 20th January 2021 on top stocks to invest in EV theme. So it's been nearly three and a half years, almost when I started my journey on YouTube. This slide is from my video where I discuss stocks across two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler and EV infra that include names like Hero, Bajaj, TVS, Mahindra, Tata Motor, Ashok Leyland, NTPC, BHEL, Reliance, Tata Power, again Mahindra, then Tata Chemical, Himadri Specialty, MOIL, Excite and Amara Raja Batteries. And look at the kind of return these companies have generated since then. Surprisingly, the highest returns are from BHEL, more than 600% return. Followed with Himadri Specialty with more than 500% return, then Tata Power, TVS Motor, Tata Motor and then Mahindra and Mahindra. A few companies like Amara Raja, Hero Motor did struggle in the past but looks like they are also back on track. Further, I kept on building my knowledge and discussed a few more stocks from EV software domain including KPIT, Tata LXE, LNT Technology and what a crazy amount of wealth these EV stocks have generated. You can always refer to my previous videos for reference. Fast forward today, Indian EV ecosystem has come a long way. Although I believe that it is still just the beginning. 21st century is all about electric vehicle and we have just started to scratch the surface. And I'm sure you would have the same question, Sahil, what are some good stocks from EV segment to add into the portfolio? Well, guess what? NSE India has made your life easy with the launch of a brand new index that would track India's biggest EV and new age automotive players. And this list has not just five ten names, but a total of 33 fundamentally strong companies. And personally, I just loved it. So in this video, I want to discuss why there is so much hype around EV vehicle and what's the opportunity size. I won't take a lot of time, just want to set the context. And then I would cover the EV names from Nifty EV and New Age Automotive Index. Obviously, it is impossible to discuss all the stocks in detail in a single video, although I've already covered many of these companies in the past. But in case you want me to cover any specific stock in detail from this list, just let me know in the comments. And please don't consider it as a stock tip. This is just for knowledge sharing. You need to deep dive to build your conviction before investing your money. All right, let's get started. So as far as opportunity size is concerned, as per Niti Aayog report by 2030, the Indian government is aiming for EV adoption to reach 40% for buses, 30% for private cars, 70% for commercial vehicle, and 80% for two wheelers. And as per Bain report, India's overall EV penetration was around 5% between October 22 to September 23 and is expected to become 40% by 2030 at 8 times growth rate. Within this, two-wheeler has highest adoption with around 5% uh, EV adoption as of today. And uh, your two-wheeler is the fastest growing market within the EV segment. In fact, even the delivery companies in India are committed for EV adoption, with Zomato aims to electrify 100% of its delivery fleet by 2030. Amazon plans to add 10,000 EVs to its India logistic fleet by 2025. Uber plans to add 25,000 electric vehicles by 2026 as part of its Uber Green initiative. Followed with three-wheeler EV adoption at around 10% and uh, expected to jump to 45%. Indian four-wheeler EV segment penetration is currently very low at around 1 to 1.5% and expected to jump to 20% by 2030. So clearly there is immense opportunity from current levels. However, one of the biggest challenges in EV adoption today is EV battery charging infrastructure. India still lacks in public charging infrastructure with one commercial charging point over 200 EV cars. In US, they have one commercial charging point per 20 electric cars and in China, they have one commercial charging point per 10 electric vehicle cars. Uh, another challenge is of course the price point, especially in four-wheeler segment. So two-wheeler price point gap between your uh, normal petrol, diesel and EV has already narrowed but in four-wheeler, there's still a lot of gap. For instance, while an entry-level petrol car in India starts at 3.25 lakh, an EV entry car is uh, at around 8 lakh rupees today. Also, there are limited options as of today in four-wheeler segment, but all top four-wheeler manufacturers like Tata Motor, Mahindra are planning to launch multiple new EV vehicles in the near future. Another issue is after-sale service of electric vehicle. And another big issue is dependence on China. India still depends upon China for import of nearly 60 to 70 percent of EV component including lithium-ion batteries. To overcome all these challenges, Indian government would play the most important role. That's where Indian government has implemented FAME policy that is faster adoption and manufacturing of electric vehicle. It launched the first phase of FAME 1 in 2015. 
Then in second term of Modi government, they launched FME2 in 2019, where government gave a subsidy of around 11,500 crore. However, all eyes are now on FME 3 budget, an announcement that would happen in July month when the new government would share its budget plan. Overall, as per reports, Indian EV market is valued at around $32 billion in 2023 and expected to reach $150 billion by 2032 at a CGR of 25.1%. Clearly, the opportunity size is huge. Now, please note that EV adoption is not just about your two-wheeler, three-wheeler or four-wheeler. It's about the entire ecosystem around EV that include EV charging ecosystem, battery ecosystem, power production, and EV auto component manufacturing. And that's where NSC has shortlisted 33 companies in its EV and new age automotive component. Let's have a look at the list. So this is the list of uh, NSC India EV and new age auto index that include 33 companies. You have got 21 auto and auto component companies that include names like Maruti Suzuki, Tata Motor, Mahindra & Mahindra, Bajaj Auto, Aisha Motor, TVS Motor, Hero Motor, Samvardhana Madhasan, Bosch, Tube Investment of India, Bharat Forge, Schaffler India, Unominda, Excite Industries, Sona BLW, Madhasan Sumi Wiring India, Amara Raja Battery, JBM Auto, Electra Green Tech, Minda Corporation and Varok Engineering. Then you have got uh, three capital good companies, CG Power, Ashok Leland. So Ashok Leland, they have categorized into capital goods, then Jupiter Wagon. You have got three chemical companies as well, uh, Gujarat Fluoro, Tata Chemical and Himadri Specialty Chemical. Then you have Ratan India Enterprise and then four IT companies that include l &T Technology, Tata LXE, Tata Technology and KPIT. And finally, you have got Reliance Industry. So what I've done is I have uh, added some important KPIs against these companies. First is the market cap. So you can see the top company in terms of market cap uh, from auto index is Maruti followed with Tata Motor, then Mahindra, then Bajaj Auto, then Aisha Motor. And the company with lowest market cap is your Verrock Engineering, then Minda Corp, Electra Green Tech. Right, then next what I've done is I've identified their current price, then PE ratio. So valuation again is an important parameter, but please note that you can't just blindly depend upon PE ratio. For instance, if you look at it, uh, let me just sort it by uh, low to high PE ratio and uh, let me just do it by auto. Now, there you go. You've got the list of auto mobile and auto auxiliary companies with uh, valuation in uh, your ascending order. So for example, Tata Motor has got a PE of just 11.9. Varok Engineering has PE of 17. Now the catch here is you can't blindly trust uh, this PE because uh, let me give you an example. So in case of Varok Engineering, what has happened is uh, if you look at the quarter result, in December quarter they have it is showing minus 443 percentage of uh, tax. Basically their profit before tax was 71 crore and their net profit is showing 384 crore because they have received more than 300 crore of tax and that is the reason their uh, PE ratio of Varok Engineering is skewed. Right, so this is not showing right picture, but otherwise uh, this is more or less uh, in line. Uh, you can clearly see there are a lot of companies uh, that are trading on higher PE multiple. In fact, uh, a majority of companies in this index are trading at higher PE multiple, bearing a few that are trading at uh, below a PE of 30. And majority of them are uh, large cap companies. Then one thing I've done is I've also added the trailing 12 month, uh, so basically last 12 month of revenue growth and profit growth. So let me just sort it in terms of uh, high to low. So company that has generated the highest revenue growth is Jupiter Wagon and look at the profit growth 166%, sales growth is 76%, KPIT again a consistent performer 45% sales growth, 56% uh, profit growth and that is also the reason it always command a premium because it is a consistent performer with very high growth. Then Ratan India Enterprise 36% uh, revenue growth, 1251% profit growth, JB Motto 30% sales growth, 44% profit growth, Tata Motor has been a turnaround story, 27% revenue growth and 1266% profit growth. Then Samantha Madhasan has shown a strong recovery after a slowdown period where sales is up 25% and profits are up 86%. Unominda 25% sales growth, 33% profit growth. So very good performance if you look at it more or less. Bearing a few companies, uh, these uh, uh, EV companies have generated very good sales and profitability. Then I've also added some price to sale EV to beta because I don't just rely on P ratio, I also look at uh, these KPIs to measure the valuation. Apart from that, I've also added ROC and ROE basically to gauge the profitability. 
So if I sort this list in terms of high to low ROC, Motherson Sumi Wiring has got 48% ROC and ROE of 42%. CG Power is, uh, has got ROC of 47 and 35.6. By the way, the data I have fetched it from Screener website. Then uh, Tata LXC ROC is 42.8, ROE is 34.5, KPIT ROC is 38.4, ROE of 41. So if you observe, these IT companies have got very good uh, profitability. And that is one of the reasons why I prefer these IT companies uh, uh, for long term wealth creation. I have also added debt to equity if I just sort it by low to high. You can see majority of companies have negligible debt bearing a few uh, that uh, have got slightly higher debt levels but otherwise majority of them have very low debt levels. I have also identified 52 week high percentage change. So what is the correction from 52 week high? If I just sort it by high to low, uh, you will see that Tata technology obviously it uh, got listed at very high premium. Its IPO price was 500 and then it got listed at uh, 1400. So from there it has corrected to current levels of 1062. Still more than 100% return from the IPO price. So it's down 24%. Uh, still valuations I feel it's on higher side. But I'm keeping a close eye on Tata technology. Then Gujarat Fluoro has corrected 23% from the peak. And the reason is slowdown in chemical sector. Then Tata LX is down 22% uh, from the high of uh, 9,000. In fact, it touched levels of 10,000. From there, it is at 7,000 today. Electra Green Tech is down 20%. Ratan India down 20%. Tata Chemical is down 19%. LNT Technology down 17%. Uh, then and so on and so forth. And uh, if you look at companies that are trading at an all-time high, it includes names like uh, Hero Motors, Samvardhana Madhasan, TVS Motors, Excite Industry, Bajaj Auto. What I've also done is I've identified companies uh, with highest return in last one year. And Jupiter Wagon has been an outperformer with 367% uh, return. Himadri Specialty 185%, Excite 159%. In fact, uh, there are nearly 11 companies that have generated more than 100% return. And if you add two more in 90s, there are 13 companies. That include Jupiter, Himadri, Excite, Amra Raja, JBM Auto, Electra Green Tech, Bajaj Auto, Hero Moto, Mahindra and Mahindra, Samvardhana Madhasan, Ratan India, Bharat Forge and Varok Engineering. Okay, this is the fact sheet document we have updated last on 31st May 2024. And you can see there are 33 companies. The base date for this uh, index is 2018 and base value is 1000. If you look at the sectoral uh, representation in terms of weightage, Auto and auto component has 73.65% weightage followed with IT that has 10.64% weightage. Chemical have 9.62, capital goods 7.2%, oil, gas and consumer 3.18 and consumer services 0.17. You can also look at the price return and total return. Obviously since uh, they've taken the base data as 2018, you can see your quarter to date, year to date, one year, five year. So one year it's been an outperformance more than 50% return. Five year the returns are around 30% which is again exceptional. And this is CAGR return. Then you have got uh, P ratio is uh, 33, price to book of uh, is 6.3. This is for the overall index. Now if you want to know the top constituent by weightage, you have the list here. Bajaj Auto has highest weightage of 6.98, Mahindra and Mahindra 6.55, Tata Motor 5.74, Samantha Madhasan 4.95, Maruti Suzuki, CG Power, Excite, Bosch, Hiro Moto and Aisha Motor. So these are the top constituent for this index. Interestingly, I want to share this information where uh, the overall weight of stocks belonging to group A. Group A is the manufacturers of two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler, passenger and commercial vehicle. So basically the automobile and auto component sector is capped at 40%. You can't have more than 40% weightage for this particular category. And individually, if you look at it, weight of each stock belong to group A shall be capped at 8%. So no company will have more than 8% weightage in this index. And all other stocks from other category are capped at 4%. And that is the reason if you look at it, Reliance, in spite of having the highest market cap in the category is not the part of top 10 list. Otherwise, this index would not show the true picture of EV and uh, uh, New Age Auto component. So this is a nice uh, breakup they have done. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, your manufacturing sector of uh, this uh, two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler capped at 40%. Within this, each stock capping is 8%. No stock will have more than 8% weightage. And other companies, they are capped at 4%. Now, I'm sure you would be thinking how to invest in Nifty EV and New Age Automotive Index. So, unfortunately, as of today, you can't invest because there is no index fund that has replicated this index yet because it was launched recently. But I'm sure soon there will be new mutual funds that would start replicating this index. So keep a close eye. But you can always deep dive into these stocks and invest individually as per your preference. 
And if you are thinking which stocks from this list of 33 companies are, can outperform? Well, honestly, all these companies are looking promising. Having said this, one thing is for sure. It is certainly worth having some companies from this EV and New Age auto domain to keep it in your portfolio. Personally, I like the EV software segment a lot and I have invested in, in all three companies, KPIT, Tata Alexa and LNT Technology. All that much lower level and keeping a close eye on Tata Technologies. In addition, I have Sona BLW in my portfolio along with your Tata Motor, Mahindra & Mahindra, Bharat Forge, Gujarat Floro and Reliance. So I have a well diversified portfolio from this list. I recently shared my portfolio detail on my weekly video series where I share one exclusive video every week with my close community of long term investors. Again, the idea is not to share tips, but to share my thought process and conviction. You can get the details on my website or via the join button. There are also a few other stocks that are looking very promising like Tube Investment, Samvardhana Madhasan, You Know Minda, Excite Industry, Amra Raja Battery, CG Power. Yes, I don't see a lot of valuation comfort in many of these companies today, but these stocks are certainly worth doing SIP for long-term wealth creation. Like I said earlier, I've already discussed a lot of these stocks in detail in the past, including KPIT, Tata LXC, LNT Technology, Tata Technologies, Samvardhana Madhasan, Gujarat Floro, Bharat Forge, then Tata Motor also I've discussed multiple times in my video, including Diwali 2023 picks, but I've still not discussed some of these stocks from the index. Maybe I can do a detailed video. Let me know if you want me to discuss any business in detail. Also, tell me in the comment. Now tell me in the comments which companies from this list do you have in your portfolio. If you find this video useful, do share it within your circle. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.